I got a birthright inheritance Europeans don't want you to have an actuality I'm an everlasting spirit personality man Soon to control elements whenever I balance my span Nationality is precious for your national redemption We come out of the dead sands gathered up at the entrance Newcastle it was political district number one And for the Vienna Convention the treaty up on these punks According to the eight of Thank you for tuning in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. You are listening to What Is Your Nationality, and I'm your host, Shem L. I'm the author of several books, including Land of the Free, which you can purchase on my website, shemel.com. That's S-H-E-M hyphen E-L dot com. Also, I'd like to give you the updates um, again, for 2022 next year, which is right around the corner, uh, we are gearing up for the first social and economic conference in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, as I've said before, we have all of our speakers lined up and we are locking down a particular venue as well as specific date and time for you. Again, uh, it looks like originally we were set to have it for the end of January, but more than likely it will be on a later month, but still in the early part of 2022. So just be on the lookout for that and and keep posted. Uh, just be on the lookout for updates. So with that said, I like to um, speak on a particular topic today. And this topic just kind of fell into my lap. I was looking for topics to speak on in reference to nationality. And this one is really, uh, truly uh, just falls right in line with what I've been saying um, earlier in some of, some of my earlier episodes. And I guess just to come off the top of my head, I will entitle this. Um, a nation without self-determination, um, basically, uh, or nationality without self-determination. I say nation without self-determination is, is kind of cool. We'll run with that. And this is inspired by a particular article, uh, on CNN. Now, this CNN article, uh, I want to give you the context, actually speaks to two separate things. Um, I'm just going to read, and there's actual articles that one speaks to one side and one speaks to another side of, of this particular subject. But I figured this one article will actually cover everything and I, I will expound on it. So basically, the title of this, interestingly enough, a recent article is entitled, Rihanna Honored as National Hero of Barbados. Okay? So that's, you know, interestingly enough, Rihanna, we all know Rihanna. She's a, a big star, a big pop star, uh, rose up, you know, as a singer, uh, a performer, um, you know, and we all know about the uh, the past incident that went, you know, that became big news between her and Chris Brown. This has nothing to do with that. She is na she is honored as a national hero of Barbados. Now, for those who follow Rihanna, knows that she's she is a native of Barbados. You know, she comes from um, uh, two parents um, who are who were born and raised in Barbados. Um, and you'll have to forgive me. I don't know the term, um, the adjective is used for someone who's of Barbados, who's from Barbados. I don't know if it's um, um, Barbadian. That may be it. I'm not sure. Um, but. Nevertheless, she's from Barbados. So that being said, this also came at the same time of another thing pertaining to Barbados 
And that is the fact that Barbados um, has officially become a republic, right? This is the same time it become republic. Like this is the same news, basically, all in one. And interestingly enough, what made them a republic is that they pretty much denounce not so much denounced, but separated themselves, if you will, from the Queen of England, which really caught my attention because most people, you know, who are familiar with Barbados know that they have, you know, their own government, internal government. Um, they have their own prime minister. They, they have got their own flag. They kind of run their things. And, um, but they're just now becoming a republic, you know. So the common thought is that Barbados was independent, was actually independent, but that is not the case whatsoever. You catch what I'm saying? Um, and around 90% of all Barbadians, um, uh, of what they called Afro-Caribbean descent. Uh, they, they use the term um, Bijan or Bijan, um, B-A-J-A-N. So there's like Afro-Bijans or Afro-Bijans. Um, so that's interesting in, in that context. So these would be melanated people of of what they call African descent right? Not European descent, okay? Who, if they were in this country, they would be classified as black, Negro colored, etc. But that, in that context, you know, is very interesting. So most of them are, are brothers and sisters who, control, who run the government, but yet they owe allegiance to the Queen of England in Europe. So this will be a very interesting episode. We're going to dive deep into this. Uh, how did Rihanna come to this position? What is her role in this? Um, you know, basically, what is the real deal with Barbados? And not just Barbados, we're going to touch on some other countries as well. So I'm excited about this. But before we continue, we have to take a brief pause for the cause. However, when we come back, we will continue our discussion. You are listening to What Is Your Nationality? And I'm your host, Shem L. You're tuned in to WDRB Media. If you want to educate, empower, and inspire our community, we're providing a wonderful opportunity for anyone who feels they can make a positive impact in the lives of others by applying to be an on-air radio personality. To set up an interview, call 877-342-7770. That's 877-342-7770 to apply. This is your chance to step out on faith. This is your chance to get the experience and education that you need in order to launch to the next level of greatness and make a significant difference. WDRB Media is now hiring on-air radio personalities. If this is you, no experience is required, no previous education needed. They do all the training. Call 877-342-7770 to set up your interview today. Welcome back to WDRB Media, the voice of the community and those streaming live through free tune in radio app and through iHeartRadio. You are listening to What Is Your Nationality? And I'm your host, Shem L. I'm the author of several books, including What Is the Higher Self, which you can purchase on my website, shemel.com. That's S H E M hyphen e -L .com. Also, to keep you posted, we are still on track for the early part of 2022 for the first social and economic conference in Durham, North Carolina. As I've stated earlier in earlier episodes, we have all the speakers lined up and we are securing a particular location, a venue. Also, locking down a date and time. We originally had it planned for the end of January, and it looks like it will actually be after January, but still the early part of 2022. So keep tuning in for more updates on that. 
Now, if you are just tuning in, we were discussing about Rihanna and Barbados. And the title of this episode is A Nation Without Self-Determination. So this article um, that inspired this episode is entitled Rihanna Honored as a National Hero of Barbados. And we are going to go into Barbados. We're going to read the article, get into some history of Barbados. Um, um, Rihanna, what is her role in this? Um, we're going to get into some law as well about um, pertaining to not only Barbados, but other countries like Barbados. Okay. So let me go ahead and read the article. Rihanna honored as national hero of Barbados. Rihanna's homeland wants her to continue to, quote, shine bright like a diamond, end quote. The singer was honored Monday in her native Barbados during his presidential inauguration, which mark, which served to mark the country becoming a republic. Let me stop there, okay? That's just the beginning of the article. This is why I said this particular article speaks to another situation happening at the same time um, for this country. Now, to give context, there's another article by CNN that actually says that Barbadians celebrate the birth of a republic and bid farewell to the queen. Now, this is the same time. This is not an old article. This is this is recent. And this happens around the same time that Rihanna is honored as a national hero. So we got to try to look at what's the connection here. So um, basically, um, what happened was they um, basically moved to remove the queen as the head of of their country okay and we're going to get into some laws to why that how that even became the situation um the cut ties to the last remaining bonds to the british monarchy after 400 years okay um prince charles himself came down to visit the country of barbados right and acknowledge uh, what he referred to as the appalling atrocity of slavery. Okay. But, but they had, they had hold on this country for over 400 years. And a lot of us didn't even know that because as I mentioned before, you know, you see melanated people running the country. If you were to prior to this, you would go to Barbados. You see people looking like me and you, you know, people who, who have been classified throughout this history as as black by you know the government and things of that nature and that being said you know you say oh they're independent it's, it it actually was promoted that Barbados was an independent country okay yet and still they are they were uh, up until recently under the queen of england under the british monarchy so that being said let's continue on with the article that i was reading about rihanna so it says oh i'm sorry bar barbadian prime minister mia motley told the crowd quote on behalf of a grateful nation but an even prouder people we therefore present to you the desig designee for National Hero of Barbados, Ambassador Robin Rihanna Fenty, end quote. And everybody, you know, people who are familiar with Rihanna know that that is her full legal name, Robin Rihanna Fenty. And uh, Motley goes on to say, may you continue to shine like a diamond and bring honor to your nation by your works, by your actions, and to do credit wherever you shall go. That's what Motley said. Now, interesting play of words, a diamond, because um, diamond is a theme that's used by Rihanna. Okay. 
uh, and we're going to get a little, little longer into that. So it goes on to say, the article goes on to say, the makeup and fashion mogul was appointed as an ambassador of Barbados in 2018. Not a lot of people knew that, okay? Trust me. (laughs) Not a lot of people knew that. She was appointed as an ambassador of Barbados back in 2018. That's three years ago. All right, let's continue. According to a statement from the Barbados Government Information Office released at the time, the position gives the celeb quote, specific responsibility for promoting education, tourism, and investment for the island, end quote. Now, this is very important that you understand, that you comprehend what is is being said, okay? Okay? She was appointed back in 2018 the position of an ambassador. And she was given, that position was to give her a specific responsibility. She's responsible, she's been responsible since 2018 for promoting education, tourism, and investment in Barbados. Meaning promoting that people invest in Barbados. 2018, and we're going to dive into this. Okay, she it goes on. The article goes on. And says she also became one of the Caribbean island countries' cultural ambassadors in 2008, doing promotional work for its tourism ministry. And so back in 2008, she was just a cultural ambassador. You know, being that she's Rihanna. But in 2018, she was appointed as an official ambassador like an actual ambassador, like the government position. She held a government office. Okay, then it concludes in the article, it says, in a move that received a great deal of support from the country, Barbados formally cut ties with the British monarchy by becoming a republic almost 400 years after the first English ship arrived on the most easterly of the Caribbean islands. Now, let's, that's the end of that article. So let's explore about Rihanna being an ambassador to Barbados. Okay. I think that's going to, you know, open up something for you. So she has the particular um title of um it's a it's a legal term and i forgive me y'all if i mess this up because i think i'm going to mess this up okay she was appointed ambassador extraordinary and planet potentiary okay I, i think i got it right but i won't say it twice so the last word beginning with the P is defined as, according to law, is defined as a person, especially a diplomat invested with full power of independent action on behalf of their government, typically in a foreign country. So what? So let's what break that down in, in layman's terms. So basically, she was given full power by Barbados back in 2018 which remember keep in mind is under the power at that time up until recently was under the control of the queen of england so it was really from the queen of england but anyway to um independently act on behalf of the government and the specifics were she was supposed to in a foreign country, in the foreign country is the United States of America. That's because that's where she resides and does business. Everybody knows that. So she 
was basically to, she was responsible for promoting education in the island, right? She was responsible for tourism, getting people to tour, right? And to invest, financially invest in the island, okay? So we're going to dive a little bit into that. And then once there, we're going to get into our next section where we're going to get into Barbados. And let me say this before I go in, because this this may get a little deep. Um, Let me start off by saying that I know there's a lot of Rihanna fans, and this is no personal attack against Rihanna, um, because she did actually start a nonprofit. And I'm all about nonprofits. I'm an advocate for nonprofit work. So I salute her for that, and I salute her for all the good works that she has done through the nonprofit. But we're just really getting into the specifics of this term, this title, this governmental title that was given to Rihanna that not a lot of people know. Most people who are fans of Rihanna, they don't know this. And what does she actually do? So let's explore this, right? Let's explore this for a moment. Now. Rihanna, okay, if you look up Rihanna and you just look up, you can go to Wikipedia on this. That's what I did. I mean, it's just to keep it simple. You go into her her activism, which is her philanthropy and her advocacy, okay? And you look into what she did from 2018 to now. And this is 2021, right? You will not really see anything that she's done on behalf that's listed, that's like publicized. And I'm not saying she did nothing. Nothing that was publicized, nothing that was really known in the in the masses that people are aware of raising awareness. Cause that's what that was her responsibility to promote education. So she's supposed to raise awareness. Nothing that raised awareness in reference to Barbados at all. Um, Now, keep in mind, she founded a foundation called the Clara Lionel Foundation, CLF, back in 2012. This is before she was appointed an ambassador. Okay, so that was in honor of her grandparents, Clara and Lionel. Those are the name of her grandparents. So. They had a program. One of the programs included the Clara um, Braithwaite Center for Oncology and Nuclear Medicine, right? So there was a center. She she helped um, produce a center, create a center at the hospital in Barbados that is called, interestingly enough, Queen Elizabeth Barbados. Okay? Queen Elizabeth Hospital is located in Bridgetown, which is the capital city of Barbados, right? And it's the main general hospital for that part of the island. The main hospital in the capital of Barbados is named Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Now you tell me, like if you like if you go into the whole aspect, and we're gonna get into. We are going to get into um, Barbados, trust me. But of all the people that they could have that hospital named after, they named it after the queen, right? And um, the CLF, the Clara Lionel Foundation, hosts, of course, the Diamond Ball charity events. Okay, that's, of course, that gets back to the diamond theme that, you know, Rihanna is about. And she's had you know, several different, you know, um, balls, you know, she has one yearly and stuff like that. If you go again, um, the last thing you really find out about her is that she did in Barbados was last year. She, provided 
seven hundred thousand dollars worth of ventilators to her country for COVID nineteen relief. That's that's what you have. That was the last thing. But if you look at the his the timeline and other stuff she did, she's I mean, a lot of the stuff has really been towards the states, like her advocacy. Um you know, fighting on the cause of the um, the LGBT community, um, Black Lives Matter, uh, participating in the Women's March, um, you know, things of that nature. Like, like keep in mind, like, there's not, if you look up, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of information on her as far as really promoting Barbados. You know, that's just a fact. Um, that's just a fact of it. So, again, so now you have someone who was appointed the responsibility because they're a big name. She's a superstar. She's a world-renowned superstar. There's no quite, no doubt about it. But when you look at the advocacy of what she's been doing, it it didn't, if you were to weigh it as far as publicly what's known, most of it, it does not pertain to Barbados. And honestly, me personally, as an outsider looking in, I'm not a particular, I'm, I'm not against Rihanna, but I'm not a Rihanna fan, you know what I'm saying, like that. I didn't know what she was doing for Barbados. I just, this, this news about her being a national here, when I read it, I was like, okay, how, what, what, what's she, what's she doing? But again, so that just gives you that context and that, and this will lead to me speaking about the history of Barbados, which is very important because this all ties, this all connects the role that Rihanna plays or, is supposed to have been playing since 2018 and what you have now and how Barbados has existed for 400 years speaks to the, my point about a nation with no self-determination. Um, but before we get into that part, we're going to take a brief pause for the cause. However, after the break, we will continue our discussion. You are listening to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. Don't go anywhere because we will be right back after the break. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, everyone. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook at WDRB Media and follow us on Instagram at WDRBmedia.radio. For double the information and inspiration. The voice of the community. Voice of the community. Welcome back to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, and those streaming live through free tune in radio app and through iHeartRadio. You are listening to What Is Your Nationality? And I'm your host, Shem L. I'm the author of several books, including What Is the Devil Sometimes Called, which you can purchase on my website, shemel.com, which is S H E M hyphen E L.com. And also, we keep you posted. We are still on track for 2022 with the first social and economic conference to take place in Durham, North Carolina. As I stated earlier, we have all the speakers lined up and as well, we are securing a location, specific venue, as well as date and time. We originally had it set for the end of January. It looks like it will be actually a later month, but still in the early part of 2022. So stay tuned for more details and updates. Now, if you're just tuning in, we were discussing about Rihanna, Barbados, and the historical turn of events pertaining to um, Barbados becoming a republic, cutting ties finally after 400 years in 2021 from the Queen of England. 
And interestingly enough, I can guarantee you that many people did not know the depth of the connection between Barbados and and the Queen, at least people outside of Barbados. Now, I won't say that the people in Barbados didn't know. I'm sure many of them are familiar with it. But to the world, you know, um, especially Barbadians who travel and maybe have migrated to the United States, you know, that's not spoken about. You know, that's not something that comes up in conversation. Many, and we're going to get into that, many countries are still under the rule of the Queen of England. And I'm going to show you how, okay? But before I do that, I actually want to read a few um, excerpts from the other article by CNN that is entitled Barbadians celebrate the birth of a republic and bid farewell to the queen, which came around the same time as the article on Rihanna being the national hero for Barbados. So I'll kind of um, jump around here. So I, I just not to be long winded on this, but one of the things that took place was um it speaks about after taking in a 21 gun salute to mark the historic switch um the uh what you call it governor general sandra mason okay um who was sworn in as president by the chief justice, okay? She bestowed upon Prince Charles, the son of Queen Elizabeth, who was the Prince of Wales, uh, with the country's, Barbados, highest ranking honor, the Order of Freedom, okay? which is quoted in the article as a move designed to highlight the continued close relationship between Barbados and the United Kingdom. Okay. Now, and in response, Prince Charles says he was touched and he spoke about, you know, the appalling atrocity of slavery and, you know, you know, the need for self-government, self-determination, um, stating freedom, justice, and self-determination have been your guides. But interestingly enough, later down in the um, in the particular, uh, what you call it, in the particular article, there's opposition. Now, Let me just go into the opposition and I'm going to get into this whole thing about what they're a part of. So it says in the article that some in Bridgetown have questioned why the Queen's son had come at all, pointing out that the island's historical relationship with the crown was rooted in slavery. Quote, no member of the royal family should participate in our major freedom day, end quote. Activist David Denny told CNN. Uh, he goes on to say that the royal family benefited from slavery financially, and many of our African brothers and sisters died in battle for change. And Denny, David Denny, is general secretary of the Caribbean Movement for Peace and Integration. Okay, so. There's also, you know, basically just a lot of talk about what took place, you know. Um, this actually goes back to uh, King James I of England claiming Barbados, right? Um, when the ships, when his ships arrived on the shores back in 1625, right? So there's a lot of history with this. So I, I just want to put some context on certain things. One, 
if you look up Barbados, the history of Barbados, right, they will tell you that there was a their supposed time of independence, right? And basically, they say that this took place around the 60s, that that full internal self-government was enacted in 1961, okay? And what happened was, initially, they joined what was called the West Indies Federations from 1958 to 1962, later gaining full independence in November 30th, 1966. That's what they claim. Okay, which basically meant meant that the people there were able to have their own prime ministers. Okay, Barbados opted to remain within what's known as the Commonwealth of Nations. Okay, this. (laughs) So I want you to put this in mind. So. They say that independence meant that the Queen of United Kingdom ceased to have sovereignty over Barbados, but the island chose to remain a constitutional monarchy with with Queen Elizabeth as Queen of Barbados. They still said that they chose, the people chose The government, the people who was running the government, right? The melanated people there chose to keep Queen Elizabeth as their queen. And the monarch is represented locally by the governor general. Okay? So that goes back to the general. So now you got from general to president now because it became a republic. So what is this? Oh, oh, and a side note. It still intends, Barbados still intends to remain a part of the Commonwealth, okay? Okay, the Commonwealth. So let's, the Commonwealth of Nations. So what is the Commonwealth of Nations, all right? The Commonwealth of Nations is basically a political association consisting of 54 member states. And all, almost all of them are connected to the British Empire. They were either one colonized, um, most of them were colonized um, territories, classified as colonized territories, but they still operate under that Commonwealth. And if you look up the Commonwealth, it will tell you that the head of the Commonwealth of Nations is Queen Elizabeth II, period. She is the head of that commonwealth. So she still runs them. So what you have when you have these um, offices like governor general, they are just representatives of the queen. They don't really run anything. (laughs) You think that they run it. They don't, they taking orders from the queen. That's how deep this is. But supposedly, they, they're telling you that they're not colonized. That's still another form of colonization. It's called a protectorate. Okay? Now, I want to go into this definition according to law about the Commonwealth. And I spoke about the Commonwealth before in terms of the states, like Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Commonwealth of Virginia. That's one term determination. And there's also another one where it speaks about um, it used to designate the English government under the protectorate of Cromwell because what you had was something called the protectorate of Cromwell or of Oliver Cromwell because Oliver Cromwell, it was a system of government that was established through the queen and Cromwell was appointed the Lord protector of the, of the Commonwealth. 
under the instrument of government, you know, back in the 1600s. Okay. So a protectorate is basically by definition is a nation or a state that is controlled and protected by a sovereign state of a greater, you know, a stronger entity. And that, that will be their means of protection. So, so let's say Barbados, Barbados doesn't really have a standing military where they can go and just, excuse me, operate on their own and interface and, you know, wage war, defend themselves. They would need help from the United Kingdom. Okay. Now, again, keep in mind, Barbados intends to remain a part of this commonwealth. They're not building anything really. They just stating so they really didn't cut ties. They they did a change in the government structure supposedly, but um it's it's just interesting, okay? Um that's they, they're still dependent. And the interesting thing about the Commonwealth, keep in mind, I said it was like 54 nations, right? Among the nations is Nigeria. Matter of fact, if Nigeria is one of the largest, the largest Commonwealth countries, actually the largest Commonwealth country in the common, in that, in that Commonwealth of Nations is India. India is the largest. After that is Pakistan, then Nigeria. Okay. So if you were to look at the map of the Commonwealth of Nations, a lot of these countries are in Africa, particularly South Africa, including South Africa. A lot of these countries are in the islands too, all throughout the Caribbean. All throughout the Caribbean. Trust and know. All throughout the Caribbean. So, like I said, Nigeria is one of the countries. And this is interesting. And again, you know, I know this is a little controversial because this is not a personal attack on our Nigerian brothers and sisters, Jamaican brothers and sisters, none of them. Uh, and I don't feel that all of them take the stance that I'm about to speak on, but this has been a common conversation as of recently, because there are some who do some people from Nigeria, Jamaican the islands, when they deal with people who are classified as African Americans, people from the States, um, some now like to use the term foundational black Americans. Um, Nigerians and other nationalities look down upon them. Um, and this is stuff I've heard growing up, you know what I'm saying? And I will say, me personally, I can't say that I've personally had, I felt that experience per se. You know, I know that, I know that, um, certain things about us and them are different in that context as far as, and that has to deal with cultural bringing, upbringing into their, into their credit. They are more connection connected to a culture, but I can never say like I've had Trinidadian friends, Jamaican friends, um, friends from parts of Africa. And, you know, I never felt slighted by them. I can say that, you know what I mean? Um, but this has been a conversation and the reason why I'm bringing it up is because one of the, one of the points, the points of contention is that people who are classified as African-American supposedly don't have their own nation. They don't run their own thing. They are still, you know, they're not independent, so to speak. But when you really look at it, many of these countries are not independent. They ran by the queen. 
Queen Elizabeth II, period. So um, I say that just to put that in context, and we really got to peel the layers off of this in terms of nationality, because it's one thing to say you have a nationality and you're not black or you um, your nationality doesn't denote anything connected to um, titles of slavery. Um, and I think I mentioned this before, but I'll, I'll mention it now. If you look up the race code that's connected to the National Vital Statistics of CDC, which is the Center of Disease Control, the headquarters in Atlanta, they have a long, extensive list of race classifications. And a lot of those classifications of nationalities of Nigerian, Jamaican, and others, they are under the black classification, not under other race, you know. No, they uh, they are classified as black. So you claim that nationality, at least according to the National Vital Statistics, you're still under that black box, which is connected to the Federal Directive 15, which voids you, which denies the black classification of a national origin. So we really got to look at this and really peel through the layers in terms of nationality because it's really deep. But I won't um, go on long. We'll get into our conclusion and we're going to take a brief pause for the cause. But when we come back, we'll um, conclude our session, our episode. You are listening to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. Don't go anywhere because we will be right back. I got a birthright inheritance. Europeans don't want you to have an actuality. I'm an everlasting spirit personality, man. Soon to control elements whenever I balance my span. Nationality is precious for your national redemption. We come out of the dead sense, gathered up at the entrance. New council, it busts political district number one. And for the Vienna Convention, the treaty up on these punks. According to the 805 Illinois Compound Statute, the religious corporation act. If you don't know, you like you. The statue created the more besides temple charted that you at least the issues by his signature he brought us Accept the straw man for value therefore he would deem mine Talking about the corpus so being conveyed the lean dies Prophet was building and babies My god I changed the devil's notice There was notice They received a low grade blow And then the beast had no understanding the revelation Spewed water at humanity I'm a rust is the statement I never would have thought it would be this way To proclaim my nationality I got a birthright inheritance Europeans don't want you to have an actuality I never would have thought it would be this way To proclaim my nationality I got a birthright inheritance Europeans don't want you to have an actuality Standing here Looking at my Moorish flag, old oh, glory, no story. Into the ground it goes back, into the old north west and southwest and make some territory. No such thing as U.S. citizen, historical enforcement. Though everything is voluntary, though. You suffering by the fuck that resolutions you don't dare to know. I'm rapping while I'm here to verify. 13, 14, 15, the memo was never ratified. To my black people, where your free national name was at? Cause attached with that, seemed like your own mental brain was snatched. Like Mark and told you many times, what was your heritage? Pick up a book and put down the alcoholic beverages. But don't stop it all at once. You can Internally damage yourself for your lungs and kidneys while going up on campus. It's time to get back to the national affairs of man. I'm talking business watch by action with self accredited. I'm a citizen of the United States of America, but not a U.S. citizen. My life's embarrassing enough. This my political status. In order to evolve, membership conduct yourself by the Constitution and by laws. Act fixes to proclaim no good you at least pointed to by an amendment. Shoot us where I've been appointed to the language of the 805. Let's get to the 1099. So just get behind the profit and corporation design because it's time, it's long. I never would have thought it would be this way To proclaim my nationality I got a birthright inheritance Europeans don't want you to have an actuality I never would have thought it would be this way To proclaim my nationality I got a birthright inheritance Europeans don't want you to have an actuality I never would have thought it would be this way To proclaim my nationality I got a birthright inheritance Europeans don't want you to have an actuality I never would have thought it would be this way To proclaim my nationality I got a birthright inheritance Europeans don't want you to have an actuality Welcome to WDRB Media The voice of the community And those streaming live through free tune in radio app And through iHeartRadio you are listening to What Is Your Nationality? And I am your host, Shem L. I'm the author of several books, including 
how many days are in the circle, which you can purchase on my website, shemel.com. That's S H E M hyphen E L dot com. Also, keeping you posted, we are still on track for 2022 in Durham, North Carolina, the first social and economic conference where we have all our speakers lined up. We are securing a place, a venue, a specific date and time. We originally had it for the end of uh, end of January, but it looks like it will be more likely in a later month. However, still in the early part of 2022. So be on the lookout for details as we update you. So if you are just tuning in, we were discussing about Rihanna, Barbados, and the new historic move of the Barbados, of the country of Barbados into a republic, um, the history of Barbados, and everything else. This episode entitled, A Nation Without Self-Determination. Uh, we really dived into uh, what Barbados is a part of, something called the Commonwealth of Nations, uh, which is ran by the Queen of England. And Barbados is still electing to be a part of the Commonwealth of Nations, which is ran by the Queen of England. So they still will have some connection to the Queen of England, still will have to uh, take orders, if you will, in some capacity, um, interestingly enough. But again, um, they were supposedly independent back in the early well 1966 as far back as 1966 they were supposedly an independent country then and now they're supposedly even more independent but they still still are under the queen of england so what does this even mean in terms of nationality i always said I've always said from the beginning, the legal definition of nationality is that quality or character that arises from the fact of one belonging to a nation or a state and that nationality determines political status. That a nation is a people existing in the form of an organized jural society. Now, while all of this is true, they are layers, which I, I've come to find out. And like I said, uh, this is recent discovery for me in terms of Barbados and these other countries and the Commonwealth of Nations. When I first started, what is your nationality? I did not know about this. I didn't know about a Commonwealth of Nations. I didn't know that there were so many nations um, that still were under the control of the Queen of England, you know. And it's interesting when you do your study and research, how you learn new things every day. So these people have a nationality, including India. India is, is within the Commonwealth of Nations. So they still answer to the queen in some capacity. And it's the largest nation within the Commonwealth of Nations. So they are protectorates, you know, just to make it plain and simple. They're protectorates. They are protected by the queen, so to speak, being that the United Kingdom is a superpower and they they have ties by way of the colonialization and slavery and enslavement of, of the people in these in these areas, in these countries. Colonialism and slavery are cousins and they're not distant cousins. They're closely related cousins. They work hand in hand, make no doubt about it. Uh, we have to peel the layers and really get into the aspiration because nationality, I tell people, you know, nationality is not the end all be all. It is the start. You know, when you deal with our people here in the States who are labeled Negro, Black, colored and African American who don't even really have a true nationality because that nationality was taken from them when their ancestors were enslaved. Uh, and they were robbed in the knowledge of self, then you really got a long way to go. But you have people 
our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world who have a nationality by definition they do have a nationality they have their flag they have their government but they do not have self-determination through that nationality full self-determination and that's what we should be working towards um nationality is still the order of the day and it is the doorway to get to those steps so we really have to build on our nationality truly um and not get caught up in the illusion of inclusion because you know there are many of us who are still caught up in the illusion of inclusion i wanted to make a point real quick that um i always found it interesting that you would still see certain um people in the caribbean like courts in the courts if you ever see images in the courts and videos of courts in certain countries of the caribbean and in africa these melanated brothers and sisters are wearing wigs like they do in england those you know those funny looking wigs cotton looking look like a bunch of cotton balls hanging down to the shoulder yeah they still wear that that's because they're in the commonwealth of nations they still answer to the queen of england so you know we have a long way to go and i hope um programs like this um get to shed light on certain things that we're not familiar with um that is really kept from the masses and i will continue to um put this information out there to educate the people so with that i want to thank you for tuning in join us next week as we tackle another topic for another time and you can continue to tune in every sunday at 2 p.m eastern standard time please remember to connect with me by going to wdrb media you can download the our heart app select wdrb media follow it and you'll be able to check me out every sunday at 2 p.m eastern standard time also if you want to be a guest on the show and discuss nationality feel free to contact me on my website shemel.com that's s-h-e-m hyphen e-l dot com you've been listening to what is your nationality and i'm your host shem l on wdrb media the voice of the community for double the information and inspiration until next week continue to be blessed and remember nationality is the order of the day and if you do nothing else proclaim your nationality peace and love